get it. You chose adversity. You got cold today. I gotta ask, man. Can we cold plunge without it becoming our new personality trait? I mean, you can't beat it. You get in t cold water for two minutes. You yeah. come out like, tell me you don't feel like a superhero. How can something exist that objectively can serve the masses, but there is still that kind of wedge now being presented to some people to access that? Focusing on the product. Like we have our product, it's good. How do we make it great? The business was shut down. I, all my income dried up because of that, so I, sold all my stuff and moved into an RV. These are kind of the stories I love to share on the show because this is what living a life ever forward is all about. I didn't expect it to be taken up this quickly by mm -hmm. this amount of people. That's what's been like such a cool part from a business end, but also just humanity. I was like, I didn't know there were this many people out there that were willing to like first spend this kind of money to do something this uncomfortable to better themselves. Yeah. The biggest one we do see is this mental health conversation people that are doing it like i like i said i feel better i'm happier i'm a better father i'm more connected to my child and that's what yeah. dopamine does mm -hmm. dopamine creates focus dopamine creates determination you know that was the plan and then the, the other big win of how this kind of really took off was I've got the guy here who's responsible for everybody's most annoying Instagram reels, TikToks. Like, we get it. You chose adversity. You got cold today. I got to ask, man, can we cold plunge without it becoming our new personality trait? Short answer, <laughs> no. <laughs> it is, uh, I mean, you can't beat it. You get in t cold water for two minutes. You yeah. come out, like, tell me you don't feel like a superhero mm -hmm. like every single time I do I've been doing it for years and I come out and I still want to yell to the world like just <laughs> I feel fucking great like yeah. and share it with the world for damn sure totally totally <laughs> um I heard you say in a recent interview that you and the team are currently in the process of going from good to great and this concept is kind of top of mind for me right now it's a great book by the way uh good to great I forget the author but from kind of the business perspective and development, I, I know you're a very curious person, a very hungry person, a very how we make it better kind of thing, but you guys have something that's very good. How do you go from good to great? What does that look like at Plunge? I mean, it's across the board. I could go in everything that we do, whether it's just focusing on the product. Like we have our product, it's good. How do we make it great? Mm -hmm. Like how do we make it, you know, all the things, like we get feedback. We have probably more customer feedback than any company on cold plunging. I want a quieter unit. I want it to get cold mm -hmm. faster. I want it to stay cold more. I wanted to have this feature with app accessibility. Okay, cool. How do we take that, make that great? And then I go marketing department. How is how are we? What's our story? What's our messaging? It, it's good. Mm -hmm. How do we make it great? Like it's just a level up going from a company that started in a garage yeah. to, you know, bringing on more experienced people, more talented people. We all get more experience, and being like, okay, if we're not mm -hmm. improving and getting better, then you know we're not doing what we. That's not what we're out to do. We yeah. want to be what great is. And that's, that's kind of an endless journey. You know, it's like the infinite game, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's more of the conversation of just like being able to reflect on ourselves. And I mean, I look at like how we manufacture the product and how we're just sourcing the product and our supply chain, like hmm. all like deep into it. Like, you know, we have our structure, it's worked, it's been good. How do we become great? What are the great companies out there? How do we go mirror them hmm. and then up level ourselves? That's kind of what you guys offer. You know, you're offering a way for people to go from good to great as well. Totally, man. You know? Yeah. I, I hadn't even really, I mean, we, I think about like a plunge and how it like mm -hmm. changes someone's life, but yeah, it's literally, that's the game that's going on. Co-sign that tagline. Works yeah. for me. Yeah. Good, good to great. We're taking it. <laughs> I really just going from warm to cold, uh, <laughs> but, but it's ninja good to great, right? <laughs> totally. You know, all this came about in a very uncertain time. And these are kind of the stories I love to share on the show because this is what living a life ever forward is all about. You hit a wall or the wall was brought to you. Like a lot of us, you know, happened during COVID. We couldn't go to a lot of places, lockdowns, things were shut down, reopened, shut down. There was a lot of uncertainty in the world. And for a lot of small business owners, that was very uncertain. And you were running these float tanks at the time, mm -hmm. which I could argue, I think a lot of people would argue are very medically necessary, very contributory to to health but the government said no and in that time you know i think when a lot of people maybe would have asked why me or gone down a rabbit hole of 
not turning it into something good. You did. How, how did you do that? What was that mindset? What was that shift like for you from, they just told me to stop my life's work to I got to do something else? Ups and downs. I mean, I for sure had days where it was kind of why me. Um, and in that, but yeah, the government, so Mike, my co-founder and I, we both own brick and mortar float tank businesses. That's what we had done. We'd become friends through that. Weren't business partners, but became mm -hmm. friends through that. Um, both in Northern California and COVID hits, we shut, we have, we have shut them down. Um, he had just happened to be moving to Sacramento, which was kind of a total coincidence. He had moved mm -hmm. up like April. It was already set in stone. He moved up April from the Bay area. So he arrives and I remember he was very adamant with me of like, I'm coming out the other side better than this right now. Like, and he put his flag down and it, it resonated mm -hmm. with me. And I was like, he, he vocalized it and it was like, no, I'm, I'm, this is, I'm, this is happening. So you're like, I'm with this guy. Exactly. Yeah. It was my personal, like I had gone, that was a very unique time for me personally. I had my partner who were together now, but we broke up at that time. Mm. Um, the business was shut down. I, all my income dried up because of that. So I, sold all my stuff and moved into an RV. So, wow, wow. so that was like, that all happened within about two and a half months, three months. And, um, you know, Mike was, he was sitting here of like, we were both into cold plunging and he was like, there's no, I'm going to, I'm going to build a cold plunge. He's an engineer at heart. That's what he does. He built a float tank back mm. before he started reboot. So he and started, this is what, like right around 2020, early 2020. This is uh, so this is April and May of 2020. Okay. So he starts, uh, so you guys got to work quick. Yeah, so everything shuts down. Everyone's at home. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of going through what I just had mentioned to you. Um, so I'm focusing on that with my life a bit, trying to get the business back open too. You know, capital floats at the time. I was like, how do we get this back open? Yeah, getting ready for that. All the PPP and all the financial. You know, is that was where my focus was. He starts working on this plunge product and creating one. God, there's got to be one that's a better price point and looks better. That was kind of the mm -hmm. goal. He starts doing it, and then he actually approaches me. This was probably summer of 2020. Hey, do you want to, what do you think? Do you want to start a business? Do you want to go into business together? And I, I actually said no to start. And really? I, yeah, it was, Why? Um, I, so I, he was doing this in his garage and I walk in and I see the product and I think he was showing me, a, he, this is a prototype. This mm. is super beta product. I was thinking he's showing me the product. Uh, he's the product guy. And I'm like, not what quite, is this shit? <laughs> I'm not exactly I'm like, dude, I'm not putting my name behind this. Mm. And he was like, cool. And so he kind of steps back and I was like, on it. And I was like, I got some other things in my personal life that this isn't the opera. This isn't my best moment to go launch a company. Um, four weeks. It wasn't a long time. He brings me back. Hey, what do you think? And it had like made drastic improvements. And I was like, this is incredible. And I, I Basically, like, let me think about this. And I think a week or two later, it was like, let's do it. I'm all in. Um, and so we launched. I remember we turned we turned the website on in September of 2020. We made a little shop, wow. Shopify plugin. We made a commitment to say we'll sell 20 of these. We had our email list from our brick and mortars, Capital mm -hmm. Floats and Reboot. And we're like, these seem like crossover customers. Let's just email them and say, hey, this is what we've been doing over the pandemic. Who wants to buy one? We'll hand deliver to your house. They were all in Northern California. Mm -hmm. Mike had a van. So that was our plan to get, how do we get our first 20 customers? We'll get our first 20 customers. We'll go shake their hand. We'll set this up at their house. We'll learn about the products. So by doing that, we had built trust with all these people. They trusted us for our business. Sure, yeah. We were yeah. able to launch the product super quick for a yeah. very low cost or very like low investment from our end. And if there were issues, we had trust with these people and they knew we were going to make it right. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have to deal with shipping because we were hand delivering the it unit. It was all local. All local from San Francisco to Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And so that was our first, you know, that was the plan. And then the the other big win of how this kind of really took off was at the time, you got to think back to like, you know, August, September of 2020, cold plunging was very niche at this time. You know, there was the Wim Hof world. If you were really into health and wellness, right, you were yeah. into this. So the term cold plunge, if you looked at Google, Google trends at the time, the term ice bath was like 10x higher than cold plunging. Mm like that term, but our network, we were like, we use the vernacular cold plunge. Like I'm going to call cold plunge. I am cold plunging. Mm. So we bought the coldplunge.com, the domain for 10 bucks. No shit. And cold that was available. No, oh yeah. Coldplunge.com was redirecting to this random sauna company and they weren't even using it. They weren't even selling cold plunges. And so we were like, this is a wasteland. Like no one is using this term. 
So we bought the coldplunge.com. So we're selling to our first 20 customers. We're in the garage. Within our first month, we're first page ranking on Google in that oh, huge term. Wow, wow, wow. So we, we, you know, there is always like a, a bit of luck and fate that kind of hits it. And so we hit this market moment where that started to accelerate. Mm -hmm. We, I remember we're in the garage building, him and I, we're the ones building these units. People are calling all over the country. Damn. Hey, I've been looking for a year. I didn't even know you guys existed. They thought we were a much larger company than we were. So at this point, we're starting to take orders. Damn. And so that was like a big accelerant. And that was, you know, and that was with no spend. That was with no all zero. All organic. All organic. That's amazing. And then the next phase was Aubrey Marcus was in his chest freezer. And we just, de it was a comment. We were like, hey, let's upgrade. Can we upgrade you? And he's like, are you serious? DMs us. He's like, hey, fly out to Austin. Yeah. And that was yeah. our first unit we ever <laughs> shipped was no to way. his house. No way. Was Aubrey? Yeah. Damn. And so, you know. That was, and that kind of got us into this, like this social media world that you talk about of like, we just really valued every relationship and took care of anyone that anyone introduced us to and over delivered mm. into what we kind of were, were giving out or providing or connecting with everyone. So that was, that was kind of the first six month playbook Damn. of kind of going from zero to wherever we went. Why cold plunge as a business model? It sounds like you guys were in the similar realm, you know, recovery, wellness, in the um, float tank space. But what was it about this that you saw as a viable next option? Like people want this, it could be a successful business. Like how did you how did you know that? How did you see that? No incredible foresight here. Mm -hmm. It was more of, like I'll speak for myself on this. It's like, for me it was, I was super into it. I loved it. Everything that I've ever started has always been from just like sheer passion. Like I love this. Like. I used Not to work a bad in, place to start. Yeah, it's like I got into soccer. I used to work in professional soccer on the business side, but I just loved soccer. Mm -hmm. So I was like, this is what I want to work in. Float tanks. I started floating. I was like, how I love this. How it's always been like this balance of selfishness with like being like selfless, you know? Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. I've selflessly want to share this because this has changed my life. Selfishly, there's a great opportunity here. This is interesting. It's going to connect me with in more interesting people. Like that's kind of always been the playbook. So if Aubrey Marcus is DMing you back. I think you got something. D it, totally. <laughs> right? you know? That's and that was the one where I think we the product market fit was bigger than we anticipated. Hmm. So yes, I thought my group of friends were all in love with this. I knew what this did for you. Like short windows of time, you get this ROI and you know how you're hmm. feeling coming out after. I didn't, ex I didn't expect it to be taken up this quickly by mm -hmm. this amount of people. Mm -hmm. That's what's been like such a cool part from a business end, but also just humanity. I was like, I didn't know there were this many people out there that were willing to like first spend this kind of money to do something this uncomfortable to better themselves, yeah. which I thought has just been like super cool and exciting to see. Well, I don't think a lot of people really knew that that's what they wanted until they began to see literally everybody on social media doing it yes um I, it didn't come up as a thing for me until i think like maybe like early or summer 2022 uh, it just seemed to be this new thing that it was the new biohack it was the new thing it was the new yeah the new thing that everybody was doing to kind of like create content but also hey if you want to be successful do this hey if you want to figure out how to overcome adversity do this hey if you want to increase these biomarkers do this it was like the new hack for uh all the human optimization space people yeah, it it exactly. It was this it's a cool way to show, like you said, you're doing something yeah, hard. Yeah. It was different. Yeah. And you know, there's something the tub, the, the look of it. It was just yeah. this it took kind of took the world by storm. The rubber ducky. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> Which fun uh, for a fun fact for the listeners, um, I didn't know this about the duck that you guys include it now because it used to be part of just the finalization production process, right? Yeah, you would was, just throw it in, hey, this is duck float, cool, drain it, get it out of here. It was literally my general <laughs> manager at Capital Floats. Yeah. She came over to our first small warehouse we had and she gave me a gift. She just wanted to see it. Yeah. Her partner worked there. So she gave me the duck and we just, we needed a, and so I had this duck. <laughs> and then we had to find a way to be like, okay, when does a tub, when is a tub finished? So we'd fill it up, it'd go through quality control. Yeah. And we're not doing a ton of tubs at this time. So it's like, oh, we have this duck. If the duck's in here and it's floating, then you know it's done. Um, <laughs> and so we just started using the duck and then it became like this cult figure. It became a thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we've had, like, it's that duck has been in the like 
<laughs> you know, LeBron James videos, <laughs> like, you know, Jake Paul, like <laughs> the most impressions of this random duck just floating around. I like anytime I post up mine, I'm like, look, here, me and my drunk duck again. Cause like it, it inevitably <laughs> yeah. just turns upside down. Yeah. So apparently if you plunge too long, you get inebriated. <laughs> <laughs> That's, we've just stuck with that duck that uh, we might have upgraded. I don't know. I, actually, the new ones going out might be floating out, but they would just turn upside down. <laughs> but, you know, what's the ultimate point here with this? Mm -hmm. You know, aside from the business aspect, what is the ultimate goal? What, what problem are you solving? What solution are you giving people for investing money, but also consciously choosing to do something very difficult and mm -hmm. unpleasant like how how is this going to serve us there's a couple of pieces here i think first and foremost you just like at the tip without getting into like physiolo physiology mm. biologically what it's we'll happening just, to you. insert a huberman lab episode for all that yeah yeah so yeah. first like i'm always clear like i'm not the scientist guy and i'm like very big and like not promote people. I push people. A lot of our partners are better at that than I am. Um, so I don't ever try and fake that. But the what you're getting in, I mean, you're coming out and you're feeling incredible. That's just like, if you do it, that's undeniable. Mm -hmm. That's what just let's start there. Can we just acknowledge that you come out, you feel incredible. And that's a huge win. The next piece to this is I liken it to we go to the gym for our body and our muscles, mm -hmm. go to the gym to tear down your muscles and they grow back stronger. That's a process that we go through. This is kind of the gym for your nervous system. Mm. You're getting in. It's it's a stressor on the system. It's you know it's what the point of it is. Your your adrenaline's coming in. You're getting mm. this fight or flight reaction, and that's good. That's that's the signal that we want. And then you get in there and you actually learn how to control and regulate and calm yourself down in that. And that usually happens a minute in, ninety seconds in. Mm -hmm. We uh, those that do mm -hmm. it like you understand. There's a moment that you kind of you settle in. And, you know, what, what are the downstream impacts of that? That's pretty large. Mm. Um, you know, we see a ton of people just for the nervous system, what that does to from hormonal dynamics to autoimmune issues that are coming up uh, to just knowing how to regulate yourself in a stressful environment. Yeah. And that's, it's really rare when you think about it, like to be able to control a fight or flight scenario. Most of the time we don't get to be in control of that. Mm. That's someone cutting us off in an unexpected moment. That's someone yelling at us at some moment, you know, we don't, and you just, you have a reaction where this, you can actually prepare and be like, I know I'm getting into something and I'm going to lose my breath. And my brain is going to say, get out of here. Yeah. yeah. Walking up to it. It's yeah. saying, don't do this. Yeah. All the things every single yeah. time I do it every morning. And Ooh, it doesn't the self -talk change. Walking up to the plunge, man. It's every crazy. Damn time. And you just <laughs> get used to it. And it, you, you recognize it. Mm. You see it for what it is. That's not going anywhere. Uh, so I think that is one of the most powerful aspects to it. Um, and then we just see like the biggest one we do see is this mental health conversation. People mm -hmm. that are doing it, like I, like I said, I feel better. I'm happier. I'm a better father. I'm more connected to my child. Like wow. Wow. those are the, that's what's showing up. I feel more, I have more drive to go after something, you know, and that's what yeah. dopamine does. Mm -hmm. Dopamine creates focus. Dopamine creates determination. Like that's, that's how it shows up. So those how, are, many, how many of us are losing dopamine now? Just, you know, doing this oh, I'm, all the I'm, time. I'm as addicted as you anyone know? on this thing. Um, so here's a way to kind of replete, uh, replenish that. It's a, it's a, exactly. It's a, it's a counter to that. Um, and you know, what's incredible is it's like a two to three minute time. There's very few things in ROI to do from this. And it's really, yeah, you have to do the hard thing, but I'm not, it's not even asking us to like, do intense breath work or go for a run. It's just get in and mm -hmm. breathe and surrender for two to three minutes yeah. and you get out and you just, it does it all for you. It reminds me of this, uh, shout out homie, Greg Anderson, this other amazing podcast, Endless Endeavor. I met Greg, uh, you know, Greg, Greg at, uh, yeah, I believe I met Greg. Uh, he probably maybe at like a first form event or okay. he was big in uh, jujitsu as well. Okay. Um, yeah, he, I love, he has this phrase of micro, micro dose adversity. And I, I really feel like, it doesn't get much better than getting cold for a minute, two minutes for the cascading benefits and the longevity of the benefits than, than that. It's all about microdosing adversity. Would mm -hmm. you say that that's kind of what we're, we're really getting through here with, with plunging? Yeah, I think it's a great tool for that. It's not the end all to be all, but it's absolutely one of the big ones. I think in this world of, you know, as the world gets, the world gets more comfortable. 
Like we are creating mm-hmm. comfort and I, I love that. I yeah. want a nice warm home. I want a comfortable bed. I want these things, but that's, we have a natural gravitation towards comfort mm-hmm. and there's a counterbalance to that. That's how we've evolved. That's, we need some level, like you said, to build this resilience. Right. Yeah. And I think, you know, sauna, cold plunging, working out, breath work, like these are just tools that we're understanding of like, oh, this is a way to counterbalance mm-hmm. to live these lives of comfort that we all desire and that we all want. Yeah. How has this kind of called you out in a way, you know, shifting from one business to another, and especially the way that it has been so well received? I'm sure it's got to be a lot more demanding uh, than maybe what you were doing in the beginning of COVID. What have you seen of yourself by mm-hmm. having to to grow with this company and grow with this movement, really? I think a lot of, uh, you know, I'd say peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys, everything's like accelerated right now into like my growth curve. And Mm so, yeah, I've never built a company of this size. Um, This quickly. This quickly. Yeah. And have, you know, we have a team of 160, 170 people. Wow. That's happened in three years. Three years. We tripled this year, (sighs) you know, in, in the last like nine months. So there's a, I don't have that experience. So I'm learning on the fly. And thankfully, I have a co-founder and a co-CEO. We actually run the company that way. Okay. And that's been, I think, one of our greatest kind of hacks into how we how we do it. I think a um, lot of imposter syndrome and accepting that. Like, how so? You know, I get in situations like, I've never been here. I don't know what this conversation, I don't I don't even know what this terminology means. <laughs> um, I, oh, man, yeah. I feel and, like, yeah. you know, yeah. it's like... like how, who invited me in this room? Exactly. Yeah. And I'm I'm kind of supposed to be the centerpiece of this conversation. Like, I'm driving this convo and I mm-hmm. don't... So it's a lot of that's either like, okay, just figure it out or own up to it mm-hmm. and get vulnerable and be transparent and ask questions and say, I don't know. Um, and the hack for me has been like, We've thankfully the company's grown and we just hire really good people. So I get to yeah, kind of, I, I get to learn from all these people mm. that have done it 20, 30 years experience to come in. I'm like, okay, now I just get to observe you yeah. and accelerate my learning a lot quicker. What does the hiring process look like for plunge? Do you guys, do you conduct the whole interview in a plunge and whoever <laughs> makes it to question, the end, man. like, you know, makes the cut? Like, it's, yeah. what does it look like, you know, for, for this type of product, but also for such a fast growing company, yep. you know, the, the phrase comes to mind, uh, quick to fire, slow to hire. Mm-hmm. You know, what is kind of your philosophy in looking at bringing people on that are going to have to contribute to the growth of such a, a fast growing company? Yeah, I think I've been, we've been quick to hire due to like what we've had to have happen. Like demand. Like we need to fill this position. We need to fill this role. We're like, you know, the growth, yeah, we have to, we're, we're already behind. Like we okay. have to find the right person. What has helped accelerate to find the right people? First, we have a product that's very impa- positively impactful. Like it attracts mm. a certain type of person. People that are like, I want to- A crazy wanna, person. Uh, yeah, crazy. <laughs> like I get what this is about. Right, I get yeah. what's going, like if you're attracted to that, there's it's already saying something mm. about you. We did a really big deep dive and distillation into like our core- values and mission and vision we actually brought in a specialist and it took us about six months leadership was all in on it and we created like what we felt and got a a team buy-in you know really from mike and i down but like who are we what is this and that's like been that's involved in every interview it's been involved in every review all of leadership's reviewed on this and on these core values Mm. so that's been great from like an interviewing process and then for every final interview we bring them in and they caught sauna and plunge. Really? You do? We, we do. Um, and so it's the fine. <laughs> I love that. It's been, wow. you know, and we, it's really more of like, not if you're some just can handle it mm. so well. It's like, are you just willing to do that? Cause it's uncomfortable. I get it. You show up, you're going to get in a bathing suit with your potential yeah. employer and is HR get, present for all of this? What's like, that? Does HR have to be present for all of this? Our VP of <laughs> HR went through this process. Um, yeah, we're we're very mindful into, you know, mm. male, female, like who's involved in that interview process, what that's like. The room is blocked out. It's not some like we're we're upfront about it. Mm. Um and it's been a hit. You know, people get excited on it. You also see not only just to go through that experience, but a, some people like all get like we just hired our senior VP of manufacturing and, and supply chain guy, incredible experience, 
ran of all Mattel's Asia and U.S. Oh, wow. okay. manufacturing. So, you know, just mo- just started. Nice uh, track record. Yeah, huge, huge hire for us. He he doesn't cold plunge. You know, he's like uh, he's into hiking, but it's like he's just into the company. He's okay. like, I see the opportunity. So I'm here. on board with you guys. Yeah, exactly. And so he comes up to cold plunge, and it's like it's a nerve wracking experience for him. Yeah. You know, it's like, man, I've never done this. Like, I'm going to get in. Can I do that? Like, and I love to see just the willingness yeah. to be like, yeah, I'm, you're going to do it. And yeah. we got you. And we're just going to breathe with you. And then we go get in the sauna and everyone's feeling lit and we're in the <laughs> sauna. And then the conversation gets way better. And then we get deeper to the core of like, what's our mission? Like, where are we going? And yeah. usually at that point, it's very clear. We're all in. They're all in. Or it's not, you mm-hmm. know, and there's still questions. And usually if there's still questions after that, we're clear that it's probably not the best fit for all parties. Um, And so it's been, that's been, we started to put that into play about um, about a year ago. I like that. Yeah. I like that. So far in your journey with Plunge, again, with just the incredible success and growth that you guys have had, um, can you think about, give us one area in which you know you're on the right path? Like, I know I am meant to be serving this mission. This is the right product. Like, I'm the guy. Hmm. And what is one other area where you feel like you have the most room to navigate in your entrepreneur journey? Great questions. Because I still feel like, you know, coming up this December, I think will be seven years, six, seven years for me of doing my own thing. And I feel like in so many ways, like, oh yeah, of course, it could only be me. And so many still in other ways, I'm like, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. Yeah, I think I, I that's kind of my reaction to that. Mm. It's like, I think for me, it's first off, personally, like, do I still wake up excited to work on what we're working on? Passion. Passion. Like, is that, that's not present regardless if I'm, should be, like, I'm just out, you know? Mm. Like, that's that's how I operate. That's just who I am. Yeah. Um. So that's present. That's still there. I'm excited in what we're, building what we're solving what's to come in the next 20 yeah. 12 to 24 months and then next it's like does do i genuinely feel that my team wants to show up to work and work on the mission that we're working mm-hmm. on and that feels very present so i outside like it's great to want like we are transforming the way that i think people view their health and cold being this brand new modality that's like ex- becoming more accessible whether it's through gyms or we mm. launch new products that's all there I think I'm very focused on like our team and our building and like making sure that all energy is harmonious Mm -hmm. and we're bought into what we're doing. And then all of that other stuff, just that will come and we'll, we'll, we'll be bigger than what we can even imagine we can be. Uh, How many team members do you have now? You said like almost 200, about 160, 170. Okay. Yeah. So now being at the helm of a ship manning 160 some people, in three years is some incredible growth. But I think it's maybe where some entrepreneurs, some business minded people might be terrified to get to. Mm. Like I signed up, I had this idea. I had signed up to do this thing because I'm excited about it and it's working. How did I end up now being responsible for a couple hundred people? How, How do you navigate that? And what maybe has been the biggest obstacle you've had to overcome or imposter syndrome you've had to navigate Mm -hmm. or just you know how do you call yourself up higher for your team yeah the the number of the employees that that like that just feels like an honor like i show up to our you know hq and it's like man all these people are here working (laughs) on like it 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 doesn't get lost on me like it's incredible it's amazing um you know i think the the other piece has been like i said hiring good people like i don't manage 160 people Right. I manage five to six people. A handful. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm probably really connecting to 10 to 15 people within the org. Mm-hmm. Then my job is like, okay, well, who are the 10 to 15 people they are? Are you having an impact? Like, that's where my mind goes. Like, mm-hmm. cool, I'm working with these. And then my job is like, how do those 10 to 15 people feel? If they mm-hmm. feel inspired, if they feel like they're being called to creative pursuits, they're good people management, like, then the 160, I'm not very, yeah. I don't get overly worked up over. Um, 
So yeah, and it's but it's also been like a, that has been a scaling. Like I've had a lot of learnings into like I'm sure I'm like sure. how we scaled it and how it's been, what has worked, what hasn't worked. Um, can you give us an example? Maybe the biggest one that didn't work. If you can talk about it, and how did you navigate that problem? I think it's like one small one, but it's it's. Um, and it, it, it wasn't like a code red thing, but it just gives an example. It's like we scaled up, we brought in, we did a brand, um, like a, a brand refresh. Okay. We had always been plunge. We were now launching the sauna. We wanted a new logo, a new color scheme. Like that all happened beginning of this year. It's great. And really happy with how it turned out. And we brought in, you know, our creative director and a lot of like high level individuals to help implement this. Mm. Um, so we're really starting to build out our marketing department bunch of awesome people come in and there was like a, we start doing new things on the webpage and Mike and I are looking at each other. It's like, this isn't, this isn't what f feels resonates with us. Like this doesn't feel what plunges mm -hmm. like we had. And so there was a process of, even though we had done the brand distillation, we had the brand book, we had, we have meetings on this yeah, yeah. and we thought everyone yeah. You know, a lot, the early team had been not far from the garage from us. They got kind of the, mm. who this company was, the pure ethos. Every new person that came in, the further away they were. I mean, we had two like, thirds of the team are in this current facility we were in, which is a much bigger, beautiful facility. They didn't have, they just wasn't anything on them. They just didn't have the connection to like the very beginning. You're talking part. actual proximity. Like yeah. they were they weren't, physically further away? Or? They weren't. Uh, so they they joined the company in the last six months. Okay. And the company is, I'm still remembering this company that were in the garage mm. or very early, the scrappiness and what we were doing and who we were about. And they that was more of a viewpoint they had. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I just assumed the team would feel that. I knew what we were about. And then you start to see the gaps into mm. and what... I think overall they they culturally understood what we were about the ethos, but there were still gaps into like you go to the web page and we're like that's not the feel, that's not how our product we want it to be represented, mm. um, and so it's just conversations like that into making sure what I think someone's coming into and what my memory mm -hmm. and connection to mm -hmm. the company is that how do I do better job of making them really understand what we're yeah. about. And I don't have that perfect answer yet. We're actually going through that process now of like, I think liquid deaths is obviously they're at the forefront of this. You know, they, you know what liquid death is when you see it. And it's, we could probably speak out loud of like, you know, they're, they create whiplash. They are like this, <laughs> like they're punk, you know, they are yeah. anti. They made water metal. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know, these yeah. statements that are like truly who they are. And I think that's our, goal from plunge and mm -hmm. making the world know that, but that starts in our own building. Mm -hmm. If there's a gap into like what someone thought maybe it was. Mm -hmm. um, so scaling that out, how does everyone really understand yeah. what it means to be, to work at plunge, who we are as plunge. So how, how do you fill those gaps in, in, in leadership? How do you fill those gaps in what I was kind of hearing you just describe missing the mark of passing back, passing down the mission driven values? So the question is, what, where am I missing? The, where have I? Like when you notice like, uh, like, okay, these people, like they're a little bit further away from the mission mm -hmm. by proximity or just newness to the company. Mm -hmm. I'm making an assumption here, but you know, as a leader, as one of the, you know, co-founders here, you've got to be addressing that. You know, how, how are you recognizing that it's a gap in them understanding the mission and how are you effectively passing that back? Yeah, I think it's providing, I have to get more clear and actually understand what I'm saying and to me it always comes down to clarity into like we have the words written out what our company's about you know if we're here to build resilience like that's mm -hmm. at the core but what does that mean like that you know it's going to be different for everybody right? exactly yeah. and like let's get into like more specific examples so providing like better clarity mm -hmm. one of our core values is like being courageously direct so it's it is I like that being very like when that's the moment let's call it out let's all get in a room let's get honest with each other let's take feedback, mm -hmm. you know, it's this, there's nothing personal here. Um, and so I think that's been a bit of my edge into, um, sometimes I'll let things go at 80% and be like, that's, that's fine. Keep moving. Like mm -hmm. it, it helps for speed, but there's times when it's like, 
when the brand really matters or certain things that truly matter, like not just letting it be 80% and getting mm -hmm. in front of it and being very direct with the team. So I think from a leadership standpoint, that's like where I've, Mike is really good at that. Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of his core, like, you know, he, he really leads us in that way. And so that's been work okay. for me to be very much straight up and like say what needs to be said. Kind of a little spinoff question here. You, you kind of been hitting on it, but I don't want to say this. What ha have you experienced this or how would you navigate this scenario where you've got somebody on your team in your, in your company that what they are there to do technically on paper, they're crushing it. Like they're the expert, they're the guy, they're the girl, they're doing the thing. But that connection like you have as a founder is just not there. And I know it's gonna be very difficult for somebody who is not the founder of a company to have that same level of passion and investment and commitment to a varying degree. When you have somebody in your company that is efficient at what they do technically, mm -hmm. but maybe it's like the heart component. How have you experienced that? How do you address it? How would you, do you even feel like that's worth bringing up? Like don't rock the boat kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to pull this out of like the, the supply chain here. It, it varies per person. Yeah, we have had experiences like that. Um, I'm trying to think of like one, you know, some specific examples into how we... A stupid reference comes to mind. I wonder if it might help you out. You've seen the movie Office Space? Oh. Okay, you know, like, you know, Brian over there, Brian has 37 pieces of flair. You know, you have, yeah. yes, you're meeting the quota, Jen. Uh, you know, you've got the right amount of flair, but... I would love to see a little more, you know, yep. she's meeting the quota, but yep. she's no Brian. So how we, how we handle those. I mean, we, we just get real direct. Like when someone's not, like, it's e so first it's either, I try not like, if I'm not equipped to really culturally is like above all the important thing for okay. us. Like we, we have reviews on culture we have like it is a comp we call them rocks and it is like a company mm -hmm. rock like mm -hmm. are we met meeting this level of um you know where our cultural fit is people wanting to work here like cross the board we do the f amongst our five values like where people are so people are reviewed exactly on that and where they're coming up short so we have systems in place that there's a consistent cadence that someone it shouldn't be out of the blue it shouldn't just come up out uh -huh. of the blue okay, like gotcha, we have yeah. structures that yeah the conversation happens. Um, yeah, I think it's also understood, like people are very different. Like some people, and what I mean by that is some people are really, you know, crush one part of their job and mm. they struggle in the other. And that's just, I think that's the case for all of us. So it's, yeah, it's really just yeah. seeing, accepting what they're good at, what they're not good at. It's not, and then taking it piece by piece. I don't have the greatest answer here. What I'm hearing in there is that you all have, you have systems in place, you have protocols, um, and you're reminding the team all along the way from start, from hiring to being on the team, you know, hey, here's the job, but here's the mission, here's the heart, here are the values. Yep. And should anything from values to the technical aspect go sideways, we're all on the same pa same page from the beginning. Correct. And, you know, it's also, there's also, it's also recognizing like, so the company's grown so quick. So some of the learning curve for people hasn't kept up with the growth of the company, which is totally normal. Right. And, yeah. And that's, that's difficult to do with kind of the, especially but, a company like you guys being so well received. And so it's been, a lot of that has been, starts off as frustration or like something's not happening. And it's recognizing like, it's not even on them anymore. Like this is on us bringing in someone that can mentor them mm -hmm. or has the experience that, you know, and it's the same a call out for myself is I don't have this experience. I haven't been at a company of this size, mm. um, let alone leading a company of this size. So, you know, I think that's recognizing like when it's like there's opportunity for growth here and we can solve this, mm -hmm. or it's just like, this is beyond where any of us in this room are. And that's when we go higher. And that's when we bring in someone that mm -hmm. is solving a problem that we are banging our heads against the wall and they can come in and kind of move mountains. Besides cold plunging, besides a cold shower, besides cold water, what's one thing that you do daily to microdose adversity, like we were saying earlier? What, what's one thing you do to level up every day? I sweat every day. Like that, that's just like a hack for my body. Like Meaning I like you're working out. I work out, okay. I sauna, like uh, I, okay, okay. um, 
you know, right now my thing is I work out first thing in the morning. Like I have, I've built a system with trainers and like, it's just what I do. Mm -hmm. I get up and why or else it doesn't happen kind of thing. Yeah. It's just what I've hacked for myself that I don't get into work. I don't, I don't have to, even since I have someone like coaching me, Mm -hmm. I don't even think like I just get in and move my body. You're like, Hey, if I could just show up, I can do the thing. I can do the thing. I can sweat. They take me to my edge. Um, and so that's, that's my season right now. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and then the daily is thankfully that like the job itself right now is kind of my micro adversity. Like I'm, it's the season (laughs) that I'm in, it's the roller coaster and it's, I go in and I feel like it's like an adrenaline, like 9am hits. Like my day's usually blocked until nine, I strap in at nine. Mm. And it's kind of like, here we go. Like my day, you know, meetings all day or whatever calendars booked out. And then, you know, five, six o'clock hits and I kind of come back out of it. And so it's more of like, okay, that's what my life is right now. Mm -hmm. And I love it. And it's not going to be forever. It's what is happening right now. And then outside of that, like, okay, how am I like regulating myself? How am I like actually calming down? Like getting my workout in first thing. So that's done. And then the rest is like, okay, you've had your day of adrenaline and yeah. kind of this adversity that's been showing up. Um, what are you doing to kind of wind down hmm. and, and stay calm and then get ready to do it again? In many ways, taking care of ourselves can be a very free and easy thing to do. But when we look at these advanced recovery modalities, we'll say of IR sauna, sauna, cold plunge, drip therapy, you know, so many exclusive clubs and things popping up now, it's, I think, able to serve a lot of people, mm-hmm. but let's be honest, there is barrier to entry in terms of accessibility, cost, sometimes you got to be invited to these things, you know, so how can something exist that j- objectively can serve the masses, but there is still that kind of wedge now being presented to some people to access that? Yeah, I think... How I are you mean, navigating that? I think there's a question, yeah. Yeah, I think the... I mean, what's, what's the, like the thing that's the, at the, on an echelon is the tub itself. You know, it's like cold water. Let's just take cold plunging. Yeah. It's just water. Yeah. It's cold water. Yeah. Um, most of us have access to some water. Um, like before I had the cold plunge, I was, I had a river that I would go get in the river and doesn't get more, doesn't get much more free than that. And that it was, yeah. it worked. It was great. Um, there was a commercial facility that I was able to get a pretty cheap uh, membership to, and I would go cold plunge there. That was kind of how I went between it. Um, so there, there are ways to do it. I think, you know, there is a, a premium on you buy a, a plunge tub, mm-hmm. you know, and you're buying what you're buying at that point is you're actually buying convenience. Like you're buying to not have ice. You're buying to have it on right. demand and clean for you. And you walk out your back door and it's there. And that is a luxury. You know, that isn't, not everyone can afford that. Totally get that. And what's cool is there's kind of taking normal elements, heating, cooling, like you can find places to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, I think um, it's really just how much you, like what is your priority in life? Um, And making that, you know, making that a habit, making that consistent in your life. I mean, our, from a company standpoint, our goal is to, you know, we want to have cold plunges at all different price points, all different styles. That's what we're solving. That's what we're setting out to mm-hmm. do. Um, you know, we just launched our newest premium one. That's like our premium product, but that that's just the beginning. And we will, you know, we want to hit different avenues of people at different spots. First, whether you're on your own personal financial level right, and, yeah. and I get it. It's like 5k, even if you have the money, it's like, I've never really done this. Am I spending 5k out of the gate? How do I, how do I try this? Mm -hmm. So creating avenues that people can feel really good about their purchase before they make that purchase. Or even probably shifting the perspective or the mindset of this is a cost versus an investment. That's the, that's the, the best part of our product is like, once people buy it, it's like, I never hear about the money situation. It's, it's one of those. And I'm, I'm, I can relate to that, like health and wellness stuff. Like I don't ever think twice on those type of expenditures. Um, 
you know, I'll buy a pair of shoes or clothes or something like that. And sometimes I'm like, I don't know why I got this. Um, but majority <laughs> yeah. of things that are yeah. like from a true health pursuit, I've really never second guessed. Um, and so, yeah, I think making it part, part of it's just like teaching the world, like what, that these tools are actually out there, not mm -hmm. just from a cold plunge, but other ways to make them that you can get access to mm -hmm. these. Um, you know, our big thing, what I'm excited on for us is we are getting, we have a, now a really legit commercial unit coming out. Really? And so that's a big focus in our company of going after and getting these products into like every gym in America and getting this at, so it's like, that is an entry point for a lot of people that haven't had access. Right. You have, you're already you're, paying. Yeah. You're 40, for 60, your, 80 yeah, membership, bucks. You can yep, get access. You to get now, now yeah. you start cold plunging and then, you know, you can start to make better educated decisions on, do I actually want to bring this into my life, spend a little right, more and have right, this at yeah. my house. So that's a, that's a route that I see of this becoming mm. way more accessible for people that, that hasn't really happened. Um, you know, it feels like it's all the rage and we feel like it's everywhere, but in reality, like maybe you more so, but I would assume not a lot of people in your network actually have a cold plunge. It, no, I wouldn't say a lot. No, I would it's, say a lot. No. And you're probably at the upper and like, tier. This is my world. Exactly. Basically. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. you are, you are living this. Yeah. So it's like, I think I can of, name a few, but I wouldn't say a lot. So I get excited with like, I go walk the floor, you know, at least one night a week where I go out it's all dark and I go read the names that are on the plunges. And what I like to do is, you know, I see John from Arkansas getting his unit. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God, like this is going to this neighborhood that there's no cold plunge in this whole neighborhood. Wow. And that wow. John now is gonna have his friends over and this is gonna be their Sunday activity. Dude, there's the big vision. That's the yeah, that wow. is the shit that just lights me that. up where it's I it's the ripple, like, mm. you know, and then now that's gonna be his family's activity, this new thing. Someone else is going to start. And then it's always this like unknown person that starts to cold plunge and they resonate right like yeah. that. And they're like, the change, it changed my life. And then they get the cold plunge. And then it's like, that's a true like ripple that, you know, of impact and change. Well, I can tell you guys this. Um, you are doing a lot more deliveries because when they delivered mine, the FedEx guy was like, man, that's like the fourth one today. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, really? He's like, yeah, dude, they're like crazy popular right now. <laughs> yeah, he was like from Santa Monica to over West Hollywood. And uh, he was like, yeah, you're my fourth or fifth one today. FedEx makes a lot of money for I us. bet, man, <laughs> I bet. <laughs> um, you know, Ryan, kind of getting to a close here, man. I, I love this conversation, kind of keeping it around. We didn't really dive into the science of cold plunging. You know, I'll save that for another episode. But honestly, I... Thank you for sharing all your vulnerability around the story and, you know, being a leader and like the origin of it and how you're navigating that, but still fulfilling your own vision and purpose. Um, and, you know, I think it's another, it's an important thing to note that, and I've heard you say this in another podcast, when asked about all the health benefits, you seem to kind of just go, man, guys, I, I just, I feel good. <laughs> you know, I feel good. And I, I love that. And even someone like myself that, I went to college, I went to grad school, got all these certifications, I did this job, I keep a lot of my content around being able to provide the scientific backup for it. But look, ultimately people at the end of the day, do you really need to know about all that stuff or just go, hey, I'm a dude, this is how I approach it, I feel better. Like, can that just be enough? Totally. Can that just be enough? And that's, for me, it's, it's always like, as I've gotten into this journey, it's like I've gone, you know, a lot of people, interviews, they want the science. And so I, I can go parrot the science. It actually feels inauthentic though, because mm. I'm kind of just reading from a doc. Like right. I, my more message is like, I have a happy life and this yeah. is one of the core things that I do. Right. And I attribute this to that. That's my body of work. And that's yeah. like what, the, so that's authentic to me. I could give you, go check out Dr. Andrew Huberman, Dr. Susanna Soyberg, Dr. Rhonda Patrick, mm -hmm. Um, Louisa Nicola, like mm -hmm. these people out there that are studying this more, go get on their webpage, yeah. go to Wim Hof's webpage. He has all the studies. Like that is the spot if you're looking for it. And there's so much good info out yeah. there. Um, if that's the angle you're looking for. I'm with you. I think ultimately people, if we get very real about the questions we're asking, do we really need to know the science? Maybe for some reason, but ultimately what we're really trying to get at is like, you know, how do you, how are you, you? Like you seem happy, you seem healthy, you're doing all these things. The science aside, like, you know, this is one of the many things I do to contribute to my physical and mental resiliency. And I think that's what most people are after. We just get bogged down in the details of the mm -hmm. journey. Mm -hmm. Well, all these 
things definitely help propel us forward in life. Uh, you're definitely going to move forward out of that cold water very damn fast. Um, but that's what we're about here at Everford Radio is what are the things that we can do, we can maintain, we can do more of, do less of to, to move us forward in one or all areas of life. When you hear those two words, Ryan, ever forward, what does that mean to you? How do you think you live a life ever forward? Just keep getting up and keep get, keep going. I mean, I always, it's as simple as that. Like, no matter how hard it gets, it's like life's going to move on. Like, mm -hmm. things keep going. It's not. It's going to go on without you. <laughs> it's going to go on without me. Yeah, so. And not to diminish all of, our, like, the issues and challenges, like, we face. And some are more. It's also never as big as, like, I don't want to say we. I'll speak for myself. Like, as I think it is. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's very comforting to me. And mm -hmm. so that's just like, what other choice do you have to take the next step? And so, um, yeah, ever forward, just one step at a time, keep going, don't overthink it. And uh, we have all the tools to, to keep moving. What other choice do we have? I love it. Yeah, it reminds me of this phrase um, a quote from Seneca, I think, big stoic philosophy fan guy. And it's, we suffer far more in imagination than in reality. Except there, when you're in a cold plunge, then your reality and your imagination are kind of the same suffer level. But the imagination but at least you're choosing and the cold the same plunge, page. I, 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 like not many other thoughts come into me when I'm in the cold plunge. That's very true. Like yeah, I, it's just for me, it's just just breath, breath, just, like, just breathe, just hyper yep. presence. Yeah, um, very yeah. true, very true. Uh, well, Ryan, you know, love what you guys are doing a plunge. I've been loving mine. Where can people go to learn more about you know you? What you guys are doing with plunge? I know you got some new products coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I have everything listed in the show notes for everybody, but. Uh, where can they go to learn more? Plunge.com is uh, everything about Plunge. And find us on the socials. Type in Plunge or Cold Plunge. We'll show up. Yeah, you can't open up social media these days <laughs> and not see somebody show up with a plunge. So uh, literally just open up your phone, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, Ryan, this is great, man. Thank you so much. Cool. Thanks for having me, man.